Tell us how you came to being in music. What were your earliest experiences with music? Right. music? Yeah, tell us about um, that. My father was an Italian, obviously. Um, I'll start again. <laughs> right. Um, he was an exceptional violinist and he emigrated to Ireland and met my mother. And of course they married, they became a Jew and they performed all over the world. Uh, they were an incredible couple. Um, I started playing at the age of 18 months and at two and a half, I was already doing um, children's hour performances, uh, mostly in singing and in piano, but then on to violin, viola, cello, etc., and composition. And I was very, very lucky. I had perfect pitch and it enabled me to think beyond my years, really. I have it written down here. All right. Yeah. Um, there, were, there are archive recordings of me at uh, two, I think, uh, somewhere in the, in the ether. Um, I went on then to do cello, um, majored in cello, piano, but composition. And I was very lucky to have a lot of interactions with composers adjudicators and various people who kept in touch with me because they enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed it too. Uh, um, my brother is an academic. My sister is a wonderful artist. Um, I have five children. Um, we had six. One unfortunately didn't survive. Oh, um, so I have two professional clarinetists. I have a, sorry, a professional clarinetist and a Claudine musicalist and majors in Baroque cello. Oh, wow. Um, I have a son who is the director of Special Olympics. I have a daughter who's an academic in Scotland. She's a terrific professor. And I have a son who's an IT whiz. So that's the family. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, Rilla, what a beautiful you are, variety. Yeah, you are prolific <laughs> both as a mother and a composer. <laughs> well, um, I would have done a lot more, to be honest with you, Elizabeth, but um, my father, a lot of opportunities were offered to me and my father would not allow me to take them. I was offered full funding for ballet, believe it or not. Oh, wow. uh, uh, yeah, and full, complete funding for three or four places in specialist music schools and he wouldn't let me go. How come? Uh, um, he had a, I think he had a view that women were not for the concert platform, except as a accompanist. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't going to have me going away. Also, I think that if he couldn't come with me, he was going to let me go. And of course, no music school is going to let your dad sit in <laughs> everything you're doing. So exactly. I wasn't allowed to go. And um, my sister Olivia is a fabulous violinist and she encouraged me all along, but then she left and she joined um, the, Welsh National Opera. And so I lost her and I didn't have anyone else. And then my father took ill and I had to do all this teaching for him. Um, I married at the age of 19. Wow. And by the age of 24, I became very ill. And uh, I had a lot of major surgeries and that curtailed everything that I wanted to do. So therefore uh, I took up teaching because I'd, I'd done degrees, I did two degrees, and they were external degrees because Papa wouldn't let me go away to do them. Um, but as I say, I took up teaching, but I was good at it, but I didn't like it. And by the age of, um, I think I was in my early 40s, I was forced to retire completely from life because wow. I was so ill. Oh my gosh. And I wrote sporadically I was always writing but it wasn't going anywhere and to me I just continued on with life um, as best we could I was very very ill and it didn't look as if it was going to survive and I did I bucked the odds mm -hmm. as the saying is and then um, it happened to be that I was in Cardiff with my sister which was unusual for me because I don't travel around much and she introduced me to Leslie Craven because she said, Roma will write something for you. And our Canaan was born. That was the first one that was done. And it was born within 48 hours. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is amazing. Hours. 
Yeah. And then from then on, Les then said to me, could you do some more for me? And I did. And he got a couple of other people involved. And that's how it all blossomed. And then I met you. <laughs> and I met Alison. And Love it just it just opened up a whole world. Honestly, you have you really have opened my, up my world for me. Oh, wow. Well, okay. So you, there's, I, I have so many more questions I want to ask you. You opened so many different things. Well, I, I want to point out, you know, I, I think that there's great synergy in music. And I think that when certain musicians meet each other, you feel that connection. And I want to point out, I mean, Allison is a pianist and Allison jump in and say anything. Allison is, is a pianist who by and large collaborates with vocalists, which I think is really significant to us capturing yeah. your work. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Allison also has a background as a dancer. Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you look like a dancer. I know. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. But in the heyday, you know, one, what did you major in? What dance did you major in? A ballroom dancing. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, all of my siblings, we dance. Oh, but I'm the, I'm the only musician, so it was great to have those crossover and be able to, because your music, your music sings is what it does, and you have the, the instruments that just help, you know, elaborate that, and it's just, it's so, it's so simple and so just enjoying to play. The dance is just, it's the expression of your whole mm -hmm. body. It is, you know, yeah. It is, yeah, and I, my mother was the accompanist at the festivals and things. And she could make your feet just dance without even, you know, you just felt like dancing. When she played Chopin or something like that, you just knew your feet had to work, you know. But uh, music is just, oh, it's amazing. Oh, well, I'm so proud of you. I'm <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I will also point out that Alison married fairly young as well. Alison, were you like 19 or 20 when you got married? I was 19, yes. And, and then had children and had to manage her career. And so I think a lot of mm -hmm. similarities there as well. Yeah. Definitely. Well, when you come out the other end of it, as I have, and you realize that waiting or it, it, it actually works in the end. You know, I've waited for a long time for someone to actually say, I like your music. And now that I've got that, I feel as if I have achieved something that was so latent within me, and now it's there. And that's why I'm so excited about yourself and Elizabeth playing my music. Yeah. Well, and I've, I've said it to you in emails, but I, I really feel like, Roma, the music that you have been writing for Bassoon is like the music I've been waiting for for my entire career, because it's, it's, it's melody-driven music, and there's so much new music especially for a bassoon that never captures a single melodic line. <laughs> it's like short motives or like a short thematic material. But when I play your music and, and the, and the phrases are eight measures long and 12 yeah. measures long. Yeah. And I just think this is it. And they're songs. I mean, the, the cantari are literally songs, but all of the, all the compositions are so song like, you know, they're so beautiful. But you see, Elizabeth, you're, you're capable of taking it across those bar lines. You know, it, it's not everyone who can actually look at a measure that, you know, at, a, at, a, at that length. I was a singer of sorts. My breath control was appalling, absolutely appalling. And I always wanted to be able to sing across the phrases. But you can, you see, you do. And what happens with Alison is Alison then mirrors that and sings across the phrases, which is why it makes it such a duo that is really unbeatable. It's a fabulous duo. And it, it, both of you mirror how the other one, it seems to be an innate sort of thing. You seem to juggle together and manage it. it it's amazing. Yeah, and I just love listening. To <laughs> oh, it's a delight to play with Elizabeth. I love, you know, she's like, I've got some more new music, and I'm like, Oh my goodness, I'm coming over. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to believe it, but there's a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm ready I love it. it. I love it. Oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, it's so yeah. wonderful. Okay, so Roma, you said that you have degrees. Are they in composition or music or what are, are in what are your degrees? One, in? Deg one, one degree in singing, 
and the other is in class music teaching. Oh, wow. Believe it or not. Um, I did the, the, all the grades uh, up to grade eight and five instruments. But I, because of my father and because, I, I mean, Papa was wonderful. Don't get me wrong. But because of his attitude to it, I couldn't go any further and I couldn't get the funding to go any further. You know, and to do my degrees, funny, funny thing is, uh, I didn't find any problem doing it. I was 15 when I did them both. And I didn't have any problem except for the theory. <laughs> <laughs> and I would not follow the rules. <laughs> I, what, I, what I heard in my ears wasn't what they wanted on their, you know, and I was going, sorry, I can't do this. And I failed the theory the first time. To my absolute, I failed the theory the first time. I was 14 and a half and I thought, oh my goodness, my world has ended. <laughs> so I got it the second time. And that's because I didn't listen to what my head was telling me. Mm. I went by the rules. Mm. So there you are. Mm -hmm. See, my head is full of it. Absolutely full of music. And it's, I go to sleep at night with maybe an idea forming in the head. Um, sleep on it, waking up in the morning, and it's running in front of my head as a full score. Wow. I don't sit. I used to sit. At, I know I'm going off on the tangent. No, 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 you're fine. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. I used to sit at the piano and compose because it was song that I was interested in. And I found my hands were going to the cadences that were right for my hands they were you know they were comfortable and then I said no this is not what I'm hearing so there I don't write at the piano anymore I sit with a blank sheet and it starts with a rest or a quaver or something and then it blossoms and it seems to be that I see it and I can write it does that sound weird no, no, I think I think oh, that's no. the I think that's the God given gift of composers and why mm -hmm. some people are composers and other people are not composers. <laughs> right. Definitely. I mean, didn't Bach, didn't he compose away from the keyboard? Let's see how this will work. Yeah, it, the, thing, the thing about it is that I can't make my hands dictate what I'm hearing. So therefore, I've got to. I've got to stop myself playing and say, no, you've got to write what's in your head. Whether people like it or not, it has to be what's inside you. And I suppose it's pent up over years. I mean, I'm very old now and it's pent up over the years. <laughs> you know? So it's all flooding out. I did it. I did it uh, once did an opera and I've done a uh, mass and I've done um, all sorts of things like that you know, with, with double choirs and double orchestras and that sort of thing. And I've written them all. They're all sitting there. Oh, wow. Incredible. You know? Never mind. Wow. We've got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, Roma, for example, the, the series of Cantari that you wrote for bassoon and piano. Yeah. Do you, do you hear the melody first or do you hear the melodies and harmonies at the same time? Yes. Melodies and harmonies all together. It, I work from the bass because I used to sit under the bass of the piano at home watching my parents uh, prepare for their concerts. It's the bass that I work from. It's, we're supposed to work from the bass anyway, but the bass really is the linchpin for me, and I work up. But the melody then is, is sitting like icing on the cake, and it's already there. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's song. I suppose it's the cello, which I loved. I suppose it's that it's that timbre that that really affects how I write. Yeah, yeah. And you have it. You see, your playing is is so sonorous. It's so beautiful. It's so song like. You know, it is beautiful, and you know it. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, and so it is. Isn't it beautiful. With the Cantari, so each movement of the Cantari is, are they, are they all flowers? They're all flowers. They're trees. Trees. Okay. They're all trees. Okay. And I got I, them, I, I, I tell you, um, during the troubles in Northern Ireland, John and I lost everything, including our house and everything, oh our business, gosh. everything. And I had a beautiful house and I planted trees in it. 
And these five trees grew and grew, or six trees or whatever. They grew and grew, and I didn't see them again for a long time. And I visited my former home in Derry. Mm -hmm. And there were these trees singing to me. And that's where Cantari came from. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Uh, wonderful. So, so we're doing, for IDRS, we're going to do um, Cantari number four, which is Salice, is that how do you how do you pronounce that? Salice. Salice, yeah. Yeah. Salice. Number four. Yes. That's what we're Salice. Okay. <laughs> so do I. Where are we? We're going to do. Here? Yeah. We're going to do. Salice. Yep. Salice. Yeah. The willow. Salice. Okay. It's a willow tree then. It's a willow. Yeah. We did it. We did it. The weeping uh, willow. Oh, excellent. We did it, uh, Allison. We did it in March, actually, for uh, my studio recital. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, um, and it's just beautiful. All these Cantari are so gorgeous. And I have had a few friends who have actually performed them finally. So, oh, really? Really, yes. Yes. Actually, oh, I, think, I think one of them, Robin Watson, might have reached out to you. She was doing number six or something, I think, yeah. at one stage. Am I right? Yeah. And she, she, um, she did reach out. She just asked me, no, what was she asked me? I haven't got um, heard from her again. Yeah. Um, but she sent me a video of her playing with her accompanist, and I put it onto my website. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, she, I think it was number six that yeah. she was doing. Yeah. She seemed a lovely player. Oh. Robin is incredible. Allison and I oh, work with great. Yes. Allison and I work with Robin in our group, the our chamber music collective, the Ladies Reading Society. And I love that. The Lady Readers. <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely yep. wonderful. Yeah, um, and Robin's wonderful. But she's got a totally different sound yep. to you. Absolutely. I mean, it's 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 day and night. It's so different. Yeah. Um, it beautiful in its own way. Mm -hmm. but it's so different it, yours is a very fine um so it it's nearly so perfect a sound yeah and and also your intonation is so beautiful you know you're right <laughs> in the you. center you're right in the center of the notes and i noticed even whenever you go to that bottom c or b or whatever it was the way you you manage just to draw it into you know beat it into submission as i say it's well, I have to say, Roma, your music is not easy. Like I'm it's sorry. no, it's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's what, and that's what I love is like it's challenging to play, but when it's once you get it, once you do it, it's it's so rewarding. It, yeah. it just, it just, it's such a rewarding uh, process to get it. But it's like every time I sit down to sit, so I've been, I've been, I, I've like barely played through the concerto one time. And I thought, I'm going to have, this is going to take a lot of work. So we're going to get there with the concerto, but it's not going to be fast or soon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, it's different again. The concerto is very, very different again. I have another one in the pipeline, but don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so you said, so your father was Italian and your bio, yeah. your official biography talks about the Italianate influences in your music. Yes. And is that really rhythmic or is it both rhythmic and harmonic where we, where we see that Italianate well, influence? I wrote down here what my mom said, and she always said it was an innate memory. It was like an innate memory of Italian and Irish heritage, and it was evident in the music. It was like a fusion of progressions and chordings mm. that that hopefully it, it had a unique fingerprint because it's in, it's incorporating the Italian and the Celtic, mm -hmm. you know. And it, there are times when it's terribly Celtic. I mean, those. I mean, t talk about. But I don't know where that comes from, except that mummy, you know, must have given me something. <laughs> Some some trace. My 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 maternal grandmother was the most phenomenal musician I've ever met. Uh, Ella, she um, she had the ability to sit down and transcribe anything from the air, literally. And I used to watch her. The, 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 she would be my main influence. I watched her upside down because she was writing at one side of the table and I was at the other side. So I had this great ability to be able to read music upside down. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> but she used to, that is impressive. <laughs> but she was absolutely fabulous. And it, it's something I was able to pass on to my children that they can play in any key, any piece. Just say it to them and they'll read it. And re- oh, sorry, they'll, they'll play it, which is brilliant. But mommy used to, um, she was a beautiful singer. And she used to sing Morgan and all of those beautiful uh, songs. And she didn't like the top A flat, A, A. So she used to say to me, I was her obligato cello. And she used to say to me, uh, we're going to play it in A. So I, great sharps, that's great, I'm happy. And she'd go up and she'd give the music to somebody in A flat. So we'd start, daddy. And of course it was the different key. <laughs> Struggling like mad to find A flat. Oh no. Yeah, she used to play little <laughs> tricks on me like that. But it it does hone it does hone that the fact that you have to be quick in your feet and you have to change and you have to be able to to fit in, you know. I I just love playing. Yeah. Can't do it now, but I just love to play, especially the cello. Yeah. But you're talking about the accomplice and the accompanying. I'm sure it's the same with you when you come across uh, a fabulous accompaniment like Cesar Frank or some of the um, some of the um, Brahms or the, they, mm-hmm. they, they, they give you something that you can't get from other I mean I love Brahms mm-hmm. and you can't get it from other composers mm-hmm. it's you have to work so hard at it but isn't it so worth it in the end I mean the Cesar Frank is a feat mm-hmm. of, of, sort of <laughs> you know yeah. But it, when you get it, it is just amazing. One of my children, uh, Carl, is a superb clarinetist. And I used to play for him all the time. He was doing BBC and various things. And it's just that it, once you get it, it is just so enthralling. I love it. I love playing. I'm, I'm so glad Sorry. you know I'm so glad you mentioned Brahms and clarinet because you know one of my great sadnesses is that Brahms never wrote a solo piece for clarinet or I mean for bassoon for bassoon for bassoon yeah yeah and we actually uh, um a really well-known bassoonist has transcribed the major clarinet works for bassoon but I feel like you have filled that role with the <laughs> Sonata. I do. Be- between the long melodies and the really, really rich, expansive harmonies, I feel like we finally got the Brahms esque solo works that we never were given by Brahms himself. And it's even better because it's by a woman now. So it's oh glorious. My goodness. I, my head is just. Gone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, funny enough, I, the first time that I realized that. Um, the first time I really seriously realized how much music meant to me was Brahms Fourth. And when I heard it, a, a door opened in my mind, mm-hmm. a window opened in my world. It was just so incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, Bach, Brahms, Beethoven, of course. But then you have Grieg, you have Richard Strauss, whose melodies are just, you know, the, it just goes to the heart. And then you have somebody like um, Elgar, the cello, the cello concerto, which I played so often and I love it so much. And these composers, Barber, there's another one, you know, the Barber uh, strings, just incredible. But anyway, sorry, I digress again. <laughs> no, I, I mean, just ha- having you list all these composers, I mean, I feel all of that inspiration within your music. Mm-hmm. And your harmonic language is is just so colorful and so rich. And I'll never forget. So I mentioned this in the email. So in, in, the, in the sonata, it was funny. And Allison, I think you'll know exactly when I say it. Okay, hang on. I need to look. I need to find it. Oh, yeah. In the third movement, um, measure 40, 41, this whole section from measure 41 until the Poco Roland Tondo. Yes. And I was like, yeah. Alison, I think there's some wrong notes here. I think these, and I and I emailed you, Rome. I was like, are these supposed to be E sharps or or E naturals? And you said, no, 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 they're E naturals. But you've got this like uh, juxtaposition of harmonies right mm-hmm. there. And it's, it's, it's definitely. It's, it's so funny interesting. You say that. It's funny you should say that because John is a fabulous violinist. My husband is absolutely incredible, and he was sitting behind me. Whenever I said, now this is what I'm doing with this. 
And he went, no, you're not. And I said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes I am. You and watch said, me. <laughs> but, but, but that doesn't fit. And I said, yes, it does, but wait till you hear it until it's all together. I don't <laughs> think he, he, he never came round to the fact that it fit it. But it does. At least I, I, I hope it does. It does. But we, we, we worked that section quite extensively i think so that mm -hmm. we could both feel comfortable harmonically yeah. with what was happening and yeah. then and then just like own it you know what i mean because yeah. there was definitely if like especially when we were preparing the recordings this past fall and i was mm -hmm. like i just don't know if these harmonies are right but they are right <laughs> and they're really exciting they're really wonderful they harmonies they're, they're unexpected yes 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 we put Very it this different. way and it's mildest they're different yeah and it's and it's worse they're awful <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, you said no. something to me about mistakes and things that are normally there whenever you get you know obviously there are always mistakes and what did I do to how did I manage to try to mitigate all the mistakes that are normally in music and to be honest with you um I would hate to send to my very best friends uh, things that were completely and absolutely useless. So I do go over them. They, they're written very quickly. Like the etudes were written inside two days. Are you serious, Roma? Wow. Yeah. Oh, Alison, these etudes, what, there's 30, 30, 30 of them? 30 well, see, of you know, them. The original I've heard about was, these etudes. <laughs> <laughs> the original oh. idea was that... Um, I was going to explore every available key signature and a lot of the time signatures. But for some reason, we got ourselves into sort of a mess because they kept flowing and I couldn't keep up with them. They were they were going, you know, <laughs> and I got to the stage where I thought it's 13, 15 or 16. And then the plastic computer broke. <laughs> 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 the computer was done. <laughs> I said, that is enough. I'm doing no more. So I thought to myself, what the dickens is wrong with this? So what had happened was, it was very simple. I'm not good at, you know, using the computer. I was trying to put it down onto Finale after I'd written them. And the blasted computer decided it didn't like it and it just wouldn't do them. And number 15, I think it was a number 25, were an absolute nightmare to get the computer to actually let me write them. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and they're not the hardest ones. No, you know, they're not. <laughs> <Good grief. laughs> Come on, we can get this done. But anyway, they, they took shape, I think, on a Friday evening. I'm not going to give a time, but if it was time, it was after tea, most probably. And I was up most of the night with these blasted things in my head and went to bed, I think on Sunday morning. <laughs> and oh my we were gosh. Complete. And so you just so composed straight through. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, they didn't come, I, I'll be honest with you, they didn't come as they are now one, two, three, as the progression would be. They came in bits. Um, you know, number the, the E major, for instance, the A major came very quickly. Um, B flat came very quickly. Um, funny enough, C sharp minor came very quickly. That's a great key. Minor anyway. Yeah, C sharp it. minor is a it. great key. Oh, it was great. <laughs> uh, it came very quickly. Uh, but the the, I think I had to unthink a few things that I, that I wanted to put down because quite honestly, I don't think there are enough treble sharps. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, they came very quickly. Yeah. You know? Wow. I mean, I honestly, I was just Incredible. looking to see, Absolutely I don't think incredible. I've, I've, I haven't made it past 11 yet. And again, these are, these are tricky. They're, uh, they're, I love, I love sight reading challenges though. And so these are like, <laughs> these are perfect for that. They're really, really perfect. And man, the, sh the keys and the time signatures, I mean, they're really wonderful, but they're definitely advanced etudes. They're, they're very yeah. advanced etudes, I would say. 
<laughs> yeah, but yeah. They're, they're beautiful though. Yeah. But then again, it, it, it's your fault. It's all your fault because if you weren't so good, it wouldn't have been that way. I should I should send you a recording, Roma, of me sight reading one of these so you well, can appreciate how soon. <laughs> now, you made one point to me, and I, I was always intending to ask you. You were saying about the uh, going um, top to to lower, that, how difficult that is. Um, could you give me an explanation as to how I could help with that, or what? Um, what, what I think the big thing is down slurs. And so, oh, I it was it's probably when I sent you notes for the sonata. And I said there was one down slur that I added in articulation. And actually there's probably a few more. Well, in reality, probably a lot of bassoonists will add an articulation because down slurs on bassoon, you have to, we say you voice them. And so we call them donkey slurs. You go, E-aw, and you have to like let the pitch drop so that it can drop between the octaves. And so it's right. not very, it's not very beautiful. And so we often will give a very soft tongue to a down slur just so we lose that E-aw, kind of voicing that has to happen. Should I or ought I to, um, add that in articulation in future or is it just something that you do automatically no let the bassoonists sort it out because they'll either just give it a soft tongue or um or it's just something, it's just something you mentioned to me and i i thought you know can i can i help yeah and can i change the way of writing it yeah and I, no i think you should just you should do exactly what you feel that you love and the bassoonists will sort it out but uh, yeah there was there was one i think in the sonata that was like undoable oh i can't remember but you did it <laughs> yeah, well no i'm pretty i'm i'm seeing if i can find it in my notes because i would have yeah it's in it's in the second movement in measure 49 it's a two octave slur on ease and yeah it's not going to happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that gets that gets a little articulation there. Yeah, and I think that was it. I think that was the only one where I was like, you That's... separated that one. Yep. I think all yep. the rest I I either got or I cheated really well. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no, she tells me. <laughs> well, the I don't truth know comes out. Or achievement, but it was brilliant. Absolutely. But do you know, to hear the music coming alive, it is such it's so exciting. It really is. It's so exciting. And that's why you write to hear this come alive uh, with your interpretation, with your personalities coming through. And it's different, totally different to what I hear, but it's the same notes and the same progressions, et cetera, but it's so you. Yeah. And no one will ever play it the way you two did. Yeah. No one, no matter yeah. who they are, because you're just, it was perfect. Yeah, I really love and Alison, I would love for you to talk about all these um, piano parts because they're really they are their own star of the show, but especially mm. like the beginning of that second movement in the Sonata. I I mean, would we just kind of let the tempo go and, and we just said, take as much time as you need. I just That's felt true. like it just opened it up. But would you talk just, about the piano parts, Alison? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, they're so fun to play because they're so involved and there's so much. I mean, it, it really is a duo or, you know, a, a trio, however. And so that is such a treat to play because having done collaborative work for the past 15 years, it's nice to feel more of a center player rather than just kind of in the background. So thank you for writing music that is just, it's fun to play and it's challenging. Yeah, yeah. but the thing is, the thing is that as an accompanist myself, I know what it's like to sit in the background and have all the adulation given to those people who actually you know, stand out front and I am the soloist. But that's not how you two operate. And that was right from the start. You could mm -hmm. see that that was the operation between the two of you who were equals and wanted to produce uh, a sound that was equal for both. Mm -hmm. And that's why, in a way, that's why it's written the way it is. I, I felt that I had the, the right then to, to explore a lot more of the harmonies and the, and because your technique was there to carry it. 
you know, he, he, there are a lot of accompanists, Alison, that don't have mm-hmm. the technique to carry it. And they don't have the technique to give the base, that lovely cushion for the player, you know, the, the, the other artist to shine. And in, in you shining as an accomplice, which you do, uh, your, your, your brilliance comes out in Elizabeth and her brilliance comes out in you. It's a beautiful pairing. It really is. But that's why it's written the way it is. And you're to blame for that. So there you are. <laughs> Marty in trouble. Great. <laughs> no, but, it's it's true. It's one it's something that I love about all these pieces as well, is that I, I feel mm-hmm. like they're really duo pieces. And I and I love that. I love really yeah. collaborating with a pianist, not as an accompanist, but like as a collaborative duo. It's it's my favorite. Two stars. Yeah. And finding mm-hmm. Allison, Allison and I have been playing together basically since 2018. Yeah, and, really. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think it's I think it's hard for a bassoonist to find a pianist who's like willing to be interested. And Allison's like, I'm on board, Elizabeth. Whatever you want to do. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I I think the, the the problem with the piano and the bassoon is the fact that the the um timbre are so akin to each other mm-hmm. that to keep the piano yeah. down is so difficult especially when i'm i'm right plastic accompaniments <laughs> but to keep the piano down for the bassoon to shine because they're in the same sort of level yeah. uh, the mm-hmm. base of the piano and the and the center of the piano seem to seem to detract from the sound of the bassoon and this is where uh, i find that allison is able to uh, manage that where a lot of accomplices don't. Am I wrong? Do you think, Elizabeth? No, no. no. In fact, I was just going to ask Allison. Did we? Uh, did you end up using the una corda pedal for that second movement of the sonata? I know we had played around mm-hmm. with it. Do you re- in the actual recordings that we did? Did you end up using it? Do you remember that? I think I think we did a little bit. Um, maybe where where it was marked pianissimo, just to give it a different color. Yes. Just on yes. top of that. I mean, it was just such a slight shift in what we were doing, but we were like, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. what we were looking for. Or was mm-hmm. it, it wasn't, not, not the unicorda pedal. What What's the other pedal? Just the damper pedal? Yeah. Uh, no, I used the damper pedal like all the time. Um, okay. Yeah, it would be the, the one on the far left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the una corda. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't, and I didn't always, I did it like at gradient levels. I didn't just do completely down all the way. And so as it would progress, you know, I'd come up or put it anyway. It just, well, it's, a fe- your, it's a feeling. <laughs> I watched your feet. <laughs> I no watched way. Your feet. <laughs> I did because I thought to myself, I wonder, will she? And you did, you did just when it was necessary. And I, I think guess. that second movement is, you either hit it right or it's impossible because the mm-hmm. the the balance is so just on the on the edge yeah you know the balance yes. of the two pe- two parts mm-hmm. just you could overpower so easily with mm-hmm. that especially with the the arpeggio you know the the runs the you re- yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i watched it and i thought oh she's so good <laughs> Oh, thank you. But yeah, we did use a little of the anacorda. Just we just needed just a, a little something extra, and yeah. so yeah, we did that a couple takes beautiful. of it without. So the yes. interpretation of it was just beautiful. The overall result was just. You must have spent many hours trying to perfect this because I mean it yes. didn't come easy. No, it it took me a it took me a while. <laughs> Yeah. which is great though well, I, I love a challenge and it, it's yeah, paid how off did for you, sure. how did you actually approach it at the start you know when you first got the music what did you what was your your approach to it did you just sit down and try and play it or did you have to read into it or what way did you do it I know when I get a new accompaniment I'm straight into it you know and then yeah. I make all sorts of mistakes <laughs> I do. I get excited and I'm like, let's go. We're going straight in here and play, play everything. And then I thought, okay, so we're going to have to take this section. <laughs> and then this section. But yeah, a lot of just really slow work, especially through the, these arpeggios here. Yes. Just it's just making sure that those so were, which, which, mm-hmm. yeah, which had, it's fluid. actually the opposite to the way you think it should be because yes. it's left, left 
right left yeah uh-huh yeah <laughs> yeah took my brain i was like what this? is this i think i might have cried for a minute and been like okay i can do this <laughs> well i i remember when we started preparing for the for the recording uh we were trying to do it metronomically and it just it didn't breathe right. at all and allison was like can we just and then we were like okay just take whatever time you need. Like I can obviously follow right. you. And then, it, and then it was just so beautiful. And then after that, like solo piano part, mm -hmm. um, oh, where are that second movement? Yeah. Yeah. And so then, and so then when the, bass, yeah, when the bassoon comes in again at 24 and then we go into like an odd tempo at that point. And yes. I, think, mm -hmm. I think it works really well in my well, opinion. Yeah. What I did actually, because of the way you interpreted it, I actually incorporated that now into the score. So the piano has got um, all the time in the world to play that interlude and mm -hmm. also a pause on that long, so that at least uh, people playing it now will, will at least attempt to play it as well as you did. <laughs> They'll never succeed. <laughs> right. Oh, it was some coaching for Elizabeth. She's like, no, take so much more time. You are Rachmaninoff. I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rock the piano off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely. beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank and um, I think you're uh, the three, I think the three people, yourselves and myself, managed to collab to collaborate, but it wasn't even that. It was just we seemed to enter each other, you know. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. minds were attuned. Yeah. It was brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. It is. No, it's loved. wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah, we did as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Roma, I'm going to drop down to the last question. Right. What, what do you want... What do you want musicians to know about you and your music as they choose from a plethora of music that's available to them? What do you want them to know about this music? Um... It's naturally grown. It's not manufactured in any way. It's straight from the heart to the piece of paper. Uh, or actually, it's straight from the heart to their hearts. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken a long time for me to be where I want to be. And I appreciate every single person who ever thinks of playing one of my pieces or plays even a little bit of it. And I think it's the uniqueness of the individuals that I look for. It's the individual sound. No, no two people will ever play it the same way. And that's the magic of the whole thing. And that's what I find so enthralling. That's really what I want people to know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. And I Thank would you. add, I would add for anyone choosing this music that you can reach out to Roma and she will respond. It's the most amazing thing. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> I'd be delighted anytime, anybody, anytime. Because and what a, I was going to say, and what a treasure to to have that opportunity with a living composer to reach out and to ask questions and to send a recording and say, what do you think of this? And do you like you this? May never, and, you'll never get a coach and answer, but don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's partially coherent. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it, it's been my treat to be able to reach out to you and to Alison, because um, I think you've given me confidence that I didn't have. I'm not a confident person when it comes to that. And you've given me a confidence to go on and do what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. all, it, it, this has all happened since 2016. Mm -hmm. That's when I started. It's all happened since then. Oh and my gosh. There was yeah. nothing, nothing printed before that. It was all there, but yeah. it wasn't printed. It was in my mm -hmm. head and in various scraps of manuscript. But yeah. Yeah. so I really, truly love what you've done. I couldn't, I couldn't love you more. You know, I just love both of you. I think you're wonderful people. Oh, thank you, know? you so. Well, thank much. you very much for all you've done for me. Thank you.